So just in short today, some words about uh, insects as food in Switzerland. 22nd of June, there was a historic day, I, can, I would say, because the government put in a draft for the new food law in Switzerland insects as edible animals and also they published three species that should be um, in that uh, list of edible insects because uh, the food law is now in discussion for the people and afterwards in the parliament also and this of course this process will last some time in Switzerland I would guess it will last for two or three years until the definitive uh, new food law will be published with insect species um, also included. So what are these three species? Um, they are derived from the Belgian list from the European Union. Um, that's kind of a normal thing because Switzerland has to synchronize uh, most of the laws of course with the European e Union because we have a lot of trade going on and if the laws are not synchronized there's always a problem in the exchange of goods. So these three um, animals on the list are Ocheto domesticus. This is called in Switzerland and Germany Heimchen and Heim means home because this animal is found everywhere uh, where people are, because mostly they are there where starch is um, or a food um, is and where warm places is, where they have something to hide. So Ocheta domesticus is spread worldwide. Even wild in Switzerland, it's a wild animal in Switzerland. Here you can see um, a plan of Switzerland where you can see that o Ocheta domesticus is found wild in the, in the near Geneva, in the Ticino, but around Zurich. So it's uh, not only um, a species that lives at home with humans, but also outside in free nature. How do they look like? Let's see whether we can show you one of these. So here. Uh, it's produced in Germany, of course, these ones, because they are produced as pet food. So all of the species on this Belgian list and all of the species also on the Swiss uh, food list, they are origi originally produced for uh, as animal feed. So look, this Ocheta, Ocheta domesticus. They are also eaten worldwide where insects are eaten. Also in Asia there are productions of Ocheta domesticus. The food of them mostly is a protein food mixed with flour of wheat and other stuff. So that's why you can also buy kind of this uh, food stuff for the insects in every pet store. Sometimes it looks like, like this. This says um, protein 10%, so all of the ingredients could also be eaten by humans. So why do we have to feed our edible insects with stuff that we can eat ourselves? This is one of the big questions and for me personally I would say don't we have other species of insects that we don't have to food our own? food to them so that we can eat the insects afterward. Isn't there any insect that eats something that we cannot eat? Let's think about that. I have an idea later. So Heimchen, Ocheto uh, domesticus. I close them, but if they escape into the wild, they also um, can live here in Switzerland outside uh, in my garden if they want. Second species Locusta migratoria. It's a grasshopper and it's one of the famous grasshoppers because it's also mentioned in the Bible as one of the uh, big pests that came over Egypt and all this stuff. So this is, uh, where is it? Let's have a look. This is not the same species. This is another species but also produced for, uh, for pets. For, especially for reptiles and things like that. This is Schistocera gregoria. It looks a bit nice. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, where are you? So, look at this. Schistocera gregoria. 
it's a, a desert locust from the desert. It, of course, is a younger nymph. The wings are not yet finished, so this can just jump around. It cannot fly yet. This is a so-called hemimetabole insect. They don't have a stage like a larva and a pupa and then an adult animal. No, they go from one of the small stages to the next one and and each molting they get bigger and bigger and bigger and afterwards in the last stage they can fly away. That's one of the that's one of the bigger ones of the same species here. Locusta migratoria is similar. It's sometimes it's a little bit more green. But what we have to do with insects like this here, if we if we want to prepare them as food, we have to remove the legs. Why do we have to? Because the legs they contain, of course, some uh, good muscle proteins, especially in this big part here. We have to remove them because of these spikes and spines on this leg. They can harm the digestive tract very badly and also if we pay, don't pay attention uh, people also can die from things like that if you don't remove. So if you prepare a grasshopper you always have to remove all the legs and the wings. Of course also the wings like this. So we have to throw away a lot of material just to eat the little rest of it uh, and most of the rest of it also, like the head or the antennas or what is made of, what is made of chitin. It's a protein, yes, but it's a protein that cannot be digested by humans. So the efficiency to convert food to edible protein for humans is of course with hemimetabole insect uh, very bad compared with the holometabole insect. We have one holometabole insect on the list. This is the third one. It's called Tenebrio molito. It's the mealworm. Everybody knows it because everybody is also a little bit disgusted uh, by the views of it probably. So this is the mealworm. It's a beetle. It's a darkling beetle uh, that goes from uh, larva stage to larva stage to larva stage and cannot molt to a pupa when they are living together, like here, uh, in groups, because um, the pupation is hindered by a lot of uh, animals together. If they are uh, singly, then they could uh, molt and pupate that produce a darkling beetle. The name is saying it, it's a black beetle 10 to 15 millimeters long who can't fly. It's uh, an animal that is also everywhere where people, where humans are, because also they follow um, the humans because they uh, have food there, uh, especially meal starch based uh, product. That's also why they are called meal worms. There's also a bigger uh, species called so four boss Morio. This is the super worm. It's just it's just like a big, a big. Um, it's a big, just like a big mealworm. Here you see it also. Also, this one cannot molt until they are singly. Here you can see them in this. They are really big, so much bigger than the normal mealworms. But also the mealworms can be pushed inside by giving them a hormone. It's a juvenile hormone that is um, stopping the mold to the pupa. So if you give them, spray them with the juvenile hormone, they will of course mold a lot of time, but all, always there is a new larva coming out. So they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and sometimes uh, even the mealworms look like the superworms then later. But they mold and mold and mold and die then as larva, they cannot pupate them anymore. So these are the three species on, the, of, on this draft of the list in Switzerland. And because uh, a lot of people, and especially um, me also with the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, we try to put some other species also 
on that list and especially hollow metabol insects because they are much more efficient and they have some other uh, advantages. They have no gut content anymore if we uh, consume them as pupas. And one of these uh, animals, probably the one that is eaten worldwide in the biggest quantity is uh, this one. What you see here is um, a pair of Bombyx mori, of the famous silk moss. Uh, they are in the stage of, of pairing. Uh, here the bigger one is the female, this is the, the male. And they are producing around 200 eggs here. Also you can see that on, a, on this sheet of paper where this female here, this little female, laid a lot, a lot of eggs. Now she's exhausted and dies after she finished the egg laying uh, process. She produces here, I would guess, around two, three hundred uh, of these yellowish uh, eggs. The pupas of Bombyx mori, they look like this. Inside the silk cocoon, the silk cocoon, this is what, what it looks like. When you take the pupa out of the silk cocoon, the living pupa, then it looks like, like this. And one of the advantages of these pupas is that they are completely filled with a, a fluid a mixture of protein, fat and water, and only very, very thin chitin uh, sheet around it. It's around 20 to 30 milligrams heavy. That of course much, much less wasted protein than with the big grasshoppers that practically half of it we cannot uh, digest. So this is really a very good uh, edible uh, insect because the efficiency is very high and we don't have to feed them our staple foods. They eat the leaves of mulberry trees. So we cannot eat the leaves of the mulberry trees. Yes, we can, but it's probably uh, difficult to digest. Although we have to say in Switzerland there are now some uh, farmers growing Bombyx mori. So we have also resources for this animal in our own country. And we can see how they are produced and, and look that they are produced uh, organically. And the other animal that is now um, already finished in a process for rearing them artificially indoors but also rearing them outdoors in in gardens is this one. It, these are the L1 stage new generation of Samia ricini. It is the famous airy silk moss from Asia. Also cultivated since around 2000 years, not an invasive species, it cannot survive in open nature. It can survive only with the help of humans who feed them and help them. They cannot, they can even not fly uh, anymore as mosses. Yeah. Another thing is that until the government decided, okay, we allow market for this and this and this species, we are allowed in Switzerland to produce and eat edibles our own. So that is a good thing also about Samia Ricini. If we cultivate it outdoors in our garden, and I will show you in this Sky Food Channel how it works, we can produce our own edible uh, insects in an organic and resource-friendly way. Thanks for watching.